Inventor arrested after journalist disappears on his homemade submarine. Kim Wall was not your run of the mill junior reporter. She was an established freelance journalist who had reported from far flung places like North Korea, the South Pacific, Uganda, and Haiti. The Swedish born journalist had written articles for New York Times, The Guardian, Vice, and the South China Morning Post. So when Kim managed to secure a rare interview with a famous Danish inventor, she was overcome with joy. Little did she know that her journey into Peter Madsen's twisted lifestyle would turn her scoop into a mystery all its own. Chasing a Scoop Kim had been chasing the interview for a few months. Ever since she'd gotten into contact with famous Danish inventor Peter Madsen, she'd been intent on sitting down with him to speak about some of his more recent inventions. So when Manson invited her to take a trip in his homemade submarine, she jumped at the chance. Ambitious Man Peter Madsen wasn't world famous by any means, but in his native Denmark, he was a bit of a celebrity. Madsen was self-made and ingenious. He had already built a working submarine by hand and was aiming to build a rocket to launch into space. It was this ambition that most intrigued Kim. Self-Made Madsen had built the craft in 2008 on a whim. He named the 40-ton submarine the UC-3 Nautilus, obviously inspired by Captain Nemo's famous crash in 20,000 leagues under the sea. After much trial and error, the man-made vessel made a successful sojourn beneath the water. It gained him much renown in his native Denmark. Submarine Ride The only caveat to Kim's interview was that she'd take a spin in Madsen's submarine something that she was more than happy to oblige him in. She met him at his dock in Copenhagen on a breezy summer day. It was about 7 p.m. when Kim stepped onto the UC-3 Nautilus. She took a picture aboard the deck. It would be one of the last images of her. Final Story Prior to the fateful interview, Kim had been planning on moving to Beijing, China. She and her Danish partner, Ole, had been involved for a number of years and had seen much of the world together. China was just the next step in their adventure together. The Manson interview was meant to be her final story before she left. It was an easy, straightforward piece, or so she believed. Going Away Party Unfortunately, Madsen ended up setting the interview for the evening of Kim and Ole's friends had planned for a going away party. Still, it would be worth it in the end, and she'd have plenty of time to spend with Ole when they got to China. Kim kept in touch while she was aboard the sub texting Ole repeatedly to let him know she was okay. Final Message Kim's last text to her partner was sent right before the vessel submerged. I'm still alive, by the way, she told him, but I'm going down now. I love you. He brought coffee and cookies, though. Ole tried to text back a number of times but received no answer. By midnight, he was worried sick and decided to contact the Coast Guard. Missing Sub Around the same time that Ole was making his call, the UC-3 Nautilus had been sighted by a merchant ship. The crew had seen the vessel on the northwest side of the Orenzen Bridge, but without any satellite tracking on the amateur sub, there was no way to find it after that. They'd have to wait until the morning to try and contact Madsen. Pulled to safety The submarine was finally spotted a day or so later by a lighthouse worker. A rescue helicopter was dispatched and radioed Madsen from their location above the obviously sinking sub. Within 30 seconds, the sub was gone. A group of nearby fishermen managed to pull Madsen to safety, but Kim Wall never re-emerged from the water. Missing Girl On the dock in Dragor, a group of reporters questioned the shivering inventor about what had happened. He told them that the sub's ballast tank had accidentally filled with water, forcing the metal tube to sink like a stone. Though they searched the area, there was no sign of Kim's body. Two weeks later, officials confirmed that the journalist was deceased. Still, questions about the whole situation lingered in the public's mind. Bagged Remains Forensic experts could tell almost immediately that Kim's arms, legs, and head had been deliberately removed. She hadn't been dismembered by some submarine accident, but because someone cut her to pieces. Then that same person had bagged those parts and weighed the bag down with car pipes and other bits of heavy metal. All signs pointed to Madsen. Three versions Considering he was the last person to see Kim alive, Madsen became suspect number one, 
What followed was the first of three unconvincing explanations Manson offered during the course of the investigation. According to the inventor, he dropped Kim off near the Halvendet restaurant at about 10.30 p.m. the night they had gone out in the sub. Air pressure A few months later, Manson changed his story yet again. In this new scenario, Kim had died of carbon monoxide poisoning while he had been up on deck. The air pressure on board had plummeted while Kim was in the engine room and the exhaust fumes had done her in before he could open the latch. Strange Admission When Manson finally got in, he tried his best to revive her, but she was gone. As in the previous account, Manson admitted to dismembering her body and dumping the remains at sea. In his mind, the gruesome ritual was a means of respecting the victim and her family. As the prosecution built the case against him, they learned some disturbing facts about the erstwhile inventor. Premeditated The smoking gun, if indeed there was one, appeared in the form of the tools Madsen had taken aboard his sub before Kim had arrived. The theory was that Madsen had allegedly brought a screwdriver, saw, and metal piping on board with the clear intention to use them on his soon-to-be victim. Exhausting Explanation during the trial, a scientist from the Danish Technological Institute was brought in to testify. Though he admitted that Kim Wall could have died of exhaust fumes while locked in the sub, this would only be possible if the temperature rose to extremely high levels. It also didn't explain why Madsen had seen fit to dismember her remains. Many questions, one conviction. The incident became an international sensation. People all over the region were hungry for justice and they watched intently while awaiting the judge's verdict. Peter Madsen was eventually convicted of premeditated murder and aggravated sexual assault. He'll serve life in prison. As to why he did what he'd done, that we may never know. Check out these other videos from Let Me Know. If you haven't made the move to subscribe to our channel, all you need to do is click on that red subscribe button. Thank you for watching.